Hey guys, what's up? I am here to give you guys a recap on the new episode of Shokugeki no Soma Shin no Sara, or you could call it Food Wars, the fourth, the fourth plate on episode seven. This episode right here was actually pretty cool, and we get to see Eina Chan, or should I say, the Ice Queen, in action. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys who are manga readers and finished, I don't know, finished with the manga, and all you guys who are up to date with the anime, you should know what I'm talking about. So if anything else, let's just get this started. We have to it that, that everyone is happy that Soma won, you know, along with Takumi Aldini, with the exception of Megumi. They still have a lot to, to enjoy, you know, but apparently their next opponents will be Tsukasa and Rindo Senpai, which she's back in action and more energetic than ever. And Momo Senpai or Momo Chan, whichever one that seems more fitting for you. Anyways, um, they decide to have Yuki Hira take a break because you know he has been like bouncing around, going all out, you know, and everyone else seems to be okay. But we have to it that like um, Aina is gonna be the one to take on Momo Chan or Momo Senpai, whichever one that seems fitting for you. Anyways, um, we see that, um, they, they all get ready to know what the dishes are, you know? We have to it that, um, Tsukasa's son is going up against Ishiki, and their theme is Wild Rabbit. As for Rindo Senpai and Takumi Aldini, they'll be facing each other, and their, and their dish will be Spear Squid. As for Erina goes up against Momo Senpai, we see to it that it is brown sugar. So yeah, we see Momo Senpai starting her dish, and it looks like to me she has a very she has a many balls of various colored batters whatsoever. Alice Chan ends up explaining that she's made colors from strawberries, matcha, cocoa, blueberries, black sesame, and many many other things. And we see to it that Momo Senpai is starting her like um dish of like squirting around these like um fillings whatsoever. Try not to get the wrong idea. <laughs> and we see to it that she's gonna like um, bake all of these things all together because there's a lot of animal faces, if anything. And we see to it, of course, like um, she's about to pour the batter with the brown sugar in it on top. And one of the judges, I think his story whatsoever, is saying something like she's doing some kind of rolling cake whatsoever, which is really popular in Japan with illustrations, you know? And she's trying to make the decoration super cute and she's actually using a technique called sucre tire or sucre tire however you pronounce it all i know is like um i don't know what that language coming from but it sounds like french to me but call me stupid if i got that wrong if anything but we see to it that momo chan is using a technique that could give the candy most glossy and glass like luster you know and she's trying to overdo her cooking process that involves a lot of cuteness and we see to it that Erina starts her dish whatsoever and she's being careful with its heat and they're looking good not to mention she's making super crunchy brown sugar and black sesame twirls and then she has two batters with only egg whites and the other with only yolks you know and even right now Erina is somehow having her skills being on par against Acad against the academy's top Pashashir Pachashir. <laughs> yeah, sorry for almost getting that wrong. But we see to it that Momo Chan's dish is about to is gonna have a start. And it looks really, really strange. Everyone's like, what in the blazing pickles is that? And it's like a castle with a lot of rolling cakes. If you guys watch the episode, you guys will get the idea. But aside from that, even one of the judges like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I said something that it's so simple that she makes it more complicated than ever. <laughs> okay, enough of that. And continuing on, we see to it that like um, one of the judges, Histore, I think, tries to dish on what becomes the next one. It says that the texture is so gentle and soft like mist dancing on your tongue. Even the other judge says, above all, what is this rich sweetness feeling in my mouth? And Momo Senpai is like, I mean, Momo-chan ends up saying, well, this is your answer. And she was actually using soy sauce. And she further explains that she used heavy cream, light brown sugar, vanilla extract, and a dash of soy sauce to make whipped cream. And then spread that on 
the cakes after they were baked, you know, rolled them up and chilled them. All in order to make the taste of the brown sugar cuter and sweeter. So this is like adding a bit of saltiness to sweets, you know, and to enhance the sweetness similar to salted caramels. But in her case, however, she happened to create her own soy sauce so whipped cream. And the other judge explained like brown sugar contains minerals like iron and sodium that you don't usually find in white sugar and it has its own unique aroma. One of the judges also backs also adds in more information by saying that the aroma of the brown sugar and the depth of the soy sauce go perfectly together. If you take a piece of the fruit with each bite, you can enjoy each the different flavors as Momo Chan explained, you know? And she also says that you can also eat this candy as well. If you if you melt a piece of your tongue before eating the cake, it's especially yummy. An also explains like no, no matter how many bites I take, I'm being led to a world of dreams again, you know? And one of the judges explains that Momo Chan has a perfect sense of a smell when it comes to the universe of sweets. So she has created a perfect castle both in visuals and in taste. And two of the judges, of course, which is Hestore and Karma, got bombarded, you know, while An also can't dodge the bullet. And we see to it that Yuki Hira's friends are like really concerned right now. And we see to it that, um, Miyamasaka Subaru, who, who specializes in tracing his opponents, further explains because I know her, you know? Her obsession with cute things makes her strive for perfection, etc. And Momo-chan ends up having some kind of, Hey, you guys want any rolling cakes? That's enough for everybody! I'm thinking about mine. Oh my gosh, dude, it turns into an aut autograph line kind of thing. But we also see to it that um, Erina is about, to, is about to finish up her dish, and Momo-chan and a freaking, like, um... Mocking way says, you could do it, Aaron Yan, you could do it, Aaron Yan. And you guys might be thinking, you're using a freaking box, not a flag, dude. Of course it's a freaking... <laughs> what does it look like to you? I don't got no mini flag. Okay, enough of me being cringy, which I am always am in most of my videos anyway. Um, we see to it that um, Momo Chan's thinking, wonder what you're making, Mo. What is it that you, you're making, huh? And we see to it, we get to see a backstory of Momo-chan as a young girl who desires cute things here and there. And she's, she ends up thinking in her mind that she spent all this time, you know, like, um, striving to be the cutest and expressing cuteness and, and deliciousness through her dishes whatsoever. And we see to it that Momo-chan one, is wondering, what is it that you're going to teach me, Eri Nyan? Because, you know, Eri-chan, before, I mean... The, the Ice Queen, Eri-chan, if anything, or Eina chan she ends up saying that she's going to teach Momo something that irritates her very, very much, you know? So if anything else, let's continue. We see to it that Eina finished her dish, and she calls it Souffle la Legueur de Grasse. And you guys, <laughs> yeah, I suck at pronouncing certain words, but please forgive me on that. Even I'm cringy at these kinds of times when you try to pronounce something. But aside from that, um, we see to it that, um, that Erina ends up making a souffle that's something similar to Soma, you know? And comparing it to visually, it looks like to me Momo's visual context is actually very high, but Erina's dish may look like it's not that great, but when the judges decide to take a taste of it, they end up realizing it's love, and they all realize that there's no ordinary pancakes, it's actually in between those pancakes actually has red bean paste. And we see to it that Erna explains that she created a paste from azuki beans and sweetened it with brown sugar. I call it my divine brown sugar bean paste. And we see to it that Alice adds in what Erna did by saying that she used a pressure cooker to reduce the cooking time without losing the flavor. Even right now, Soma also adds on that she also uses two pancakes with red bean paste filling in the middle, which basically means it's a doriyaki in her own kind of version, you know? And one of the judges, Histore, of course, says that Azuki beans from the Tokachi have improved the already impressive flavor, and, and Charme ends up saying that the sweetness of the bean paste envelops the brown sugar, you know? It's perfectly clear that not the least bit overbearing here and there. And we see to it that um, 
the MC ends up being drawn by her deliciousness or something, which is really freaking funny. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, how ridiculous is that? But aside from that, we see to it that like um, ev the judges are pretty much like um, blown away by Erina's dish as well. But Momo-chan says, hey, you know, I admit, the cuteness level of that dish is really good, but I had to give it a 95. And we see to it that Momo-chan asks Erina, asks Erina by saying, why did you put? Why did you even bother putting the red bean paste in it and making it a doriyaki? It would disrupt the souffle's delicate, fluffy texture and aroma. If you mixed it with the brown sugar into the meringue and made souffle pancakes, then I would have gave you a hundred. I can tell just by looking that points would be docked, you know. And we see too that Aaron is like, "Oh, you think you're so sure about that? All right." Give it a try. I want you to try, you know? I want you to give it a shot and tell me what you think otherwise. Let me hear your second thoughts, you know? She even challenges Momo to try her dish and tell me to tell her otherwise, you know? And we see to it that Erna also explains to Momo-chan that once you have a taste, you know what has put you in such a foul mood since the last match. And we see to it that Momo-chan take a bite and she's like, what the heck? I can't change this! And we see to it that she's actually going like the deep complex flavor that she used it, used in the ingredient, which is the secret ingredient, is yogurt, you know? And we have to it that Erina explained that she used Greek yogurt, a unique type of yogurt that's thickened and concentrated through a straining process. Straining the excess moisture from the yogurt condenses it, giving it flavor, a gentle body that's reminiscent of cheese. And Erna explained that she mixed that with the meringue for the pancakes. And we see to it that Ann also, ex also adds on that it brings out the flavor of the red bean paste, which is the star of the dish, you know. And we see to it that the she didn't use any special tools. Instead, she used coffee filters. She also explained like ob not, not only they are easy to use, they are obviously excellent for filtering. They were the perfect choice for straining the yogurt, you know. Because of this strange yogurt acting as my secret ingredient, I'm able to finally reach the level of deliciousness that I was seeking, you know? And one of the judges, Charme, ends up explaining that if she had used a ricotta or cream cheese which have stronger flavors, then just like a Akamana Momo-chan said, said, she would have lost points. And we see to it that, like, um, Historia, it says, man, this girl is terrifying. Now that I've seen this, I can't imagine a better twist for this dish. Is that she was given a divine inspiration to share with us mortals. And we see to it that Erna explains something. The answer I sought for my dish could only be found by going beyond what is correct, you know? If I hadn't seen Toro Toro-san's dish that challenged everyone's expectations, I could have I could not have made this dish. And we see to it that Alice also tells Megumi that the dish Sofle le Lega de Grace is what she called it, right? Sofle Lega also means like Sofle, and Gresson translates to blessings or Megumi. So pretty much the dish that Erina named it was was actually for Megumi herself, which is really sweet and nice. I mean, Erina did explain in this episode towards the end of the match that she, if it wasn't for her looking at Todokuro-san's match against Momo-senpai of her simplicity in other cases, she would never have thought about this dish in the first place, you know? And try to go beyond what is correct. And... We see to it that Erina tells Momo-chan or Akaman, Ak Akanaga kubo san like, I understand why you're so mad because I'm pretty sure you continue to create nothing but per perfect dishes with your overwhelming talent up until now. And that's the reason why you could, that, and the reason why you're in a foul mood right now is because you could not acknowledge the dish with unknown brilliance that has completely out, that's completely outside the world you rule over. And that's why abandoning 100% under conventional norms, and she went on, and Momo and Toto Kurosan ended up doing something 120% that's beyond that. And that irritated the hell out of you. And we see to it that Momo is so mad that she goes like, what the hell you think you talking to, huh? You, everyone calls you an ice queen for a reason, and Erin is like, look, I know I'm an ice queen, but I am no longer a queen who just sits back on her throne, okay? And she actually had the same irritation experience when it came to Yukihira himself. 
and we see to it that like a mom was like no 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 whatever i say is the cutest is supposed to be the cutest but we see to it that she can't fight against anus dish and she goes like this doniaki is super cute i think in my mind oh well you got your butt handed by a divine tongue who's how many seats below you again? <laughs> and she says, I'm glad you liked it. And she won 3-0 to zero automatically. Pretty much. Blow out. And Yuki Hiro's teasing her by saying, Hey, you stole my line kind of thing. Blah, blah, blah. It was so funny. And you look at me like as a glance or something. Like, sounds like to me, you say, Oh, thank you very much. I'm stealing your line whatsoever, you know? And Megumi thanks Aina chan very much for her inspiration of the dish and ends up crying, you know. And I'm thinking in my mind, oh my gosh, Megumi, you're such a baby every now and then. And preview of the next episode is called Watching From Beside You. So, yeah. Looks like um, Aina's match was all done in this episode. And Aina brings out something that um, Momo chan did not expect at the same time why she was in the foul mood that she could not accept. But Aina showed her otherwise of how she explained it through her dish and taught Momo something like the reason why you don't like this or that is because you cannot accept anything that it's not even your place to rule that's the reason why that ticked you off and Erna explained that she actually went through that with Yukihira you know which I go like I guess sometimes you learn something that's not in your zone and you go like what the f man I'm pretty sure everyone goes through that. So, yeah, that's about it, people. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Alpha Zero. Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye.